look at song lists, whatever the genre, country, rock, pop, R&B, there are multiple, multiple, multiple songs that talk about working for the weekend, the grind of daily life, looking forward to Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Thank God it's Friday. The OJs captured this perhaps well. Monday to Thursday, I'm dead on my feet most of the time, too tired to eat. When I try to read the paper, I fall fast asleep. But as soon as Friday rolls around, I lay all my weekly burdens down. I put on my glad rags. I paint the town Friday night alive, living for the weekend. Said, uh, I'm living for the weekend, living for the weekend. Got to solve that same old grind with those five-day weeks. Sometimes I get frustrated through the day. Take off early in a cut and pay. At the time, I don't really care because I done took all that I can bear. That's when I party down, party hard, party down, living for the weekend. You know, most of us have this feeling within us, this uh, desire, don't we? This sense that we're supposed to look for something beyond today. Uh, For some of you, it's sports. It's a particular season of sports. You look for it all year round. And when it finally comes, you have a sense of gladness within your heart. For others of you, it's a particular show. Uh, You ended the season, you didn't know what to do, now you're waiting for it to come back the next season so you can watch it. For others of us, it's a kind of food or a particular holiday or a particular vacation spot. We're always looking for something forward to look forward to. As a matter of fact, we'll tell each other that if we don't have anything to look forward to, then we feel we can lose hope. A sense of good feeling goes away. And this is just a part of our ordinary daily life. That's why the pandemic this last year has been so hard, isn't it? The things we looked forward to that gave us a good feeling and a sense of gladness, most of those were removed. And so we had to find another way, what? To get through the day, to get through the five days, which now felt like seven. And inside of us, some of us haven't been able to do that. It has been so hard. We've lashed out at people. We've been irritable, angry. Some of us have grown terribly sad. And others of us have had to rediscover. Some of you have rediscovered board games. And you no longer think they're bored, boring, but something that you could do together. Some of you rediscovered taking a walk in the neighborhood. All of us have this in us, looking forward to something, feeling like we've paid our dues, feeling like it's our turn, feeling like we deserve something. We're meant to have something more. It's just a common human experience isn't it? Where do you think that comes from? That is part of the data, isn't it? As you're looking for evidences about making sense of this life. Why is that, that we look forward to something? Jesus would tell us that we have that within us because we were created personally by God. And God, personally knows us and personally created us for himself and that we are in some kind of bewildering in between where we're estranged from the one we were meant to know and love and we feel it inside of us. If you were to follow Jesus, you would have heard him talk a great deal about a future to look forward to, particularly a reward a future reward that we're to look forward to. And he would tell us that there's a kind of uh, working for the weekend that lets us down. And there's a kind of working for the weekend that will provide what we most long for. He said it like this, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. We know this, those of us who've worked for the weekend, and that's all we've worked for. 
we know that eventually we think to ourselves, even the weekend lets us down. Is this all there is? But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Jesus, you would hear Jesus say this sort of language like, look, it's right for you to look forward to something. You were meant to. Your heart is involved and your heart wants to treasure something. Treasure heaven. Look forward to heaven. The things heaven provides will give you a good feeling that never ends. And the freedom that you long for, the sense of belonging that you are trying to find will be there and it will never run out. Set your heart on more than just the weekend. Seek the reward of the afterlife. But how? How do we do that? Well, first, we look to Jesus who gives us hope of reward. Many, many passages, these are just a few. Jesus just tells us plainly that there's a great reward for us in heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice, be glad, your reward is great in heaven. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them so that your giving may be in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And you get this sense as you, if you were listening to him, you would get this sense that he and the Father are in relationship, that there's some kind of relationship that you have with God and that Jesus is talking about a future reward on the basis of this relationship with God. And you would scratch your head and say, what is that? He's talking like God knows us. He's talking like God intimately knows us. And he's talking like there's something we would do in this life, not so other people would know about it, but just between me and that God. And we would have this relationship together. And Jesus gives us hope of reward on the basis of loving God rather than leveraging God. In contrast, he would say it multiple times like this. When you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets. Are you tired of Christian hypocrisy? Jesus, long before you were born, was fed up with it too. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. What does that mean? You'd be listening to him talk like this. When you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. They love to stand and pray in the synagogue and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. What's he talking about? They've received their reward. They've gotten what they've wanted. They didn't want a relationship with God the Father. They weren't trying to seek a reward out of love for God. These religious people were working for a religious weekend. They weren't going out to party and party hard to forget the grind of the week. They were going to religious services. They can't wait because there they get to show off. They get to leverage God for their own prestige, their own sense of entitlement, their own sense of appearance before others. And Jesus says, you can do that. You can live like that. You want to use God like that? Go ahead. That is your reward. Nothing more. Why? Because the reward Jesus is talking about is relationship. And if you have no interest in that relationship, you won't have it. Relationships take two. And uh, leveraging God versus loving God, Jesus gives us hope that we don't have to be hypocrites and we can look for the reward of the afterlife in the context of a a relationship with God. Well, who, who is receiving this relationship? And in this, Jesus not only gives us hope, but clarity, clarity, where he's gonna tell us 
that um, if we, things like this, everyone who has left house, houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. Jesus is talking to people who love him and it was, there was no incentive to love him in that culture. If you followed him, you had family members who might betray you and turn you in to the government. If you followed him, uh, you'd have uh, employers who might overlook you. You might lose your job because you're following Jesus. That's so opposite of in our current cultural moment where we believe if we are Christians, we should be able to get a job. That's unique in the history of the world. Most Christians have never thought of life in that way. They know that if they follow Jesus, it might go the other way. And because of that, it costs them to set their reward as something future rather than here. And Jesus is saying, I'm telling you, you will receive a hundredfold in eternal life. Before him will be gathered all the nations and he will separate people from one and another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right, the goats on his left. The king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Whatever you do, do for his glory, knowing from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. This kind of uh, uh, teaching goes like this, if you love those who love you, what reward do you have, Jesus says. Even the tax collectors love like that. Who receives this reward? He gives us clarity. Those who seek to love like he does, which means we don't, he's teaching us something that's baffling. We don't just love those who look like us and sound like us and believe like us. What reward do you have, he says. Everybody loves like that. But to love those who are not like us, who cannot pay us back, to love even enemies, who loves like that? There's where the reward is. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward, Matthew 10, 42. I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you welcomed me. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick, you visited me. I was in prison, you came to me. Blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Who who are those, Jesus says, receive this reward? Those who are seeking to follow him, to love like he loves, to serve as he serves, to value what he values, out of relationship with the Father that he points us to, all of this on the basis of faith, that God who so loved the world gave his only son that whoever believes in him would have this reward of everlasting life. Why then are we rewarded? Are we saying that we are rewarded for our good works? No, the passages that we read all speak of inheritance. What's an inheritance? An inheritance is when you receive something you have no right to. You did not in your own work for it. You don't own it. It has nothing to do with you. It does not belong to you. It had nothing to do with you saving for it. Your effort, it was that somebody out of ideally love by their own personal will and testament gave you what was not yours but was theirs. An inheritance is a gift. And Jesus regularly describes these rewards as inheritance. Now on the one hand that tells us there's nothing here that you can work for. On the other hand it tells you something startling. In an inheritance, someone has thought about you ahead of time. And out of love, this is the way Jesus thinks of it. I've been a pastor a long time. I've seen the other side. I've been to funerals where families are split apart because of each sibling demanding their right. This isn't what Jesus is talking about. 
This is Jesus talking about gift. You had no right. It was freely given. And that means that someone was thinking about you and thought about you and thought about what you might enjoy and what might be pleasurable to you and good for you. And he set it aside for you. The reward Jesus talks about is different than um, the idea that you get enough points to get into the good place. You try to get more good points than bad points. If you work hard enough, then you can finally get into the good place. As a, as um, really I think important and as interesting and as well done as that show is, that's a common way of thinking, it's just not a Jesus way of thinking. In that way of thinking, there is no father. There is no relationship with God. No one's sad because they're not in the good place because they're missing out on God. They're missing out on the city. They're missing out on the consolation of every tear wiped away. They're missing out on the lamb whose scars have purchased public justice, personal forgiveness, art and architecture and every glad gift of God who is our sun and our moon. No one's missing heaven because they miss God. In that show, people are missing heaven because they feel they're missing out on things they could have had for themselves. But Jesus speaks of inheritance. Famously, he tells a story about a, uh, an owner of a vineyard. He invites people early in the morning to go work for him, and they do. Along the day, the, work, the owner realizes he needs more workers and can provide for more workers. So along the day, workers come, workers come, and workers come. And then when the day ends, the owner is going to pay everyone. And he pays those who came the last hour the same wage that he paid those who worked all day. Well, you could imagine being a worker all day. Furious, upset. I deserve my due. I worked all day. The owner says, did I not give you what I pledged? Did I not provide for you what I said I would provide? Is it not mine to give if I want to bless another? If I want to bountifully bless another, isn't it not mine to do? How have I betrayed you? How have I been unfair to you? I have given you and given to them and all of you have received. And the parable Jesus tells is uh, upsetting because what he's saying is that this is all inheritance, not merit. The reward that waits for you is gift and grace. But there is reward and we wanna know what, what is that reward? Are there rewards for us individually? Yes. What are they? We would like to see that. As our worship team comes on up, we're thinking now about a reward awaiting us, an inheritance of grace given by God that will endure and last forever, fail us, never end. And this inheritance is prepared for those who love him and who follow Jesus as his children. But what is the reward? And are there differing rewards for differing people? Let's pause there. We'll meditate and sing, and then we'll come back and look at those questions.